federal government on Wednesday in Abuja declared that the avalanche of terrorist attacks and insecurity across the country, especially in the north, had not overwhelmed it. Federal government's declaration comes as bandits who abducted passengers on the Kaduna-bound train last month have threatened to kill them if the federal government fails to meet their demands. In a video released yesterday, the armed men said they were not interested in money, adding that the federal government knows what they were asking for. The video, which was less than two minutes, had four of the bandits in, with one of the abducted passengers, Mr. Alwan Hassan, managing director of Bank of Agriculture. Ali Hassan was kidnapped on March 28th by a gunman who bombed the Abuja Kaduna train with more than 360 passengers. Alwan Ali Hassan has regained freedom from his abductors after nine days in captivity. In a chat with Arise News, a source who spoke on the condition of anonymity said that Mr. Hassan regained his freedom unhurt after paying an unspecified amount of money as ransom. One of the terrorists who spoke in Hausa said the MD was released due to his age and in the spirit of Ramadan. Joining us now to discuss what the federal government of Nigeria should be doing to rescue the kidnapped victims is Captain Omar Babangida Aliyu, retired, who is a national security resource and solutions options consultant, a former military intelligence officer and member of the 40th Regular Course. He served in the Directorate of Military Intelligence, DMI, while in service. Good morning, Captain. Thank you so much for joining us. Good morning, Chindun. Nice to be here. Good morning, Captain. Good morning, Doctor. Yeah. Well, is the uh, Nigerian government overwhelmed? So, uh, yes. Former yes. President uh, Lucia Gombasuja was the first to say, look, the government is overwhelmed. The people should not be overwhelmed. The government says it is not overwhelmed. But what's your uh, assessment? Uh, let's be fair to our armed forces. Let's be fair to our brothers and sisters, Nigerians. Our government is overwhelmed. It's been one incident after another, sometimes back to back. And the more reprieve we we'll seek, the more remorse we get. Everybody right now has, we're waiting to exhale. Everybody is like, because you don't know where it's going to be coming from next, okay? Uh, if you recall, uh, we were here a while ago on this same desk, and I said something about a statement or a document that was written by the NSA. Good enough, he still sits, he's a sitting NSA. It was a national security architecture statement, if you recall that document. And you remember I said, let's have this conversation two years hence. Here we are. I told you, sir, if you recall, that except what is written in that document is executed and seen on ground, it will just be a very well-written essay. I'm quoting myself right here on this table. Well, two years hence. I believe then the trending word was naysayers and whalers. That was what we were called. But today, if we go back in time, in retrospect, let's have that conversation. It's two years now. Can we begin to say it was a well-beautifully written essay? say a resounding yes to that. Oh dear. So what is it that the terrorists want? Because they've claimed that it's not about money. What is it about? And they say that the federal government knows what they want. What is that? That's what Mr. President will have to tell us. Because I'm telling you that I've looked at it, I've pondered, and I have wondered what could these people want? They have rubbished the magnanimity of the state. They have no respect for constituted authority. Dialogue, diplomacy, name it has failed. Rehabilitation, reintegration, re all the arts too have failed. And they seem to always ask. For me, the only per person that can tell me what they want is my president. I don't think there is any other person who knows anymore. The armed forces will fight till Africa passes away and we are not going to see what these people want. So I believe there is something between them and the commander-in-chief which he is not telling us. It's, it's quite a scary one, what is happening in our country today. Uh, we'd like to dial back to those that have been kidnapped. So is it that we don't even have anything on ground? Can't we 
even track where they are now with the victims? What is really going on? Some unconfirmed reports said the individual that was released yesterday had to pay a ransom. The amount not specified. There's a story on the front page of the Daily Trust this morning saying 11 months after, 10 months after, 11 year old school girl still in captivity. And there's a writer here that says the kingpin built mansion and live in large forests. So uh, people are already building mansions in the forest, setting up their colonies at some point. I want to believe that they can be found. Um, a certain video clip went viral three, four days ago. And um, I don't know if you saw it. And it was actually one of the bandits. It was actually the lo their locations, live, as in on time, real time, live. And one of them was even frustrated. He couldn't get a shot off at the drone. That was, he, was actu he actually released some shots, but uh, somebody need to have told him that that thing is out of range. That thing was done probably the same way, the same way Centurion was used during the NSAS, you know, during the NSAS riots to man the Lake Airport Express, if you remember. And when the, a team of troops was videoed to have left Bonnie Camp, and it was videoed right and up to when it got to destination, from source to destination. So nothing is hidden anymore on planet Earth 2022. Let's accept that. A lot of things can be seen if you have the know-how, and if you are willing to see it. But if you are not willing to see it, then nothing, no one can make you see so it. So are you saying that the federal government is not willing to... I don't think, I don't think, I don't think so. My own honest... You're saying sincere. the federal government is not willing to fight this bandit what else, or what, terrorists? What else do you make of it? Let me put it to you this way. If you want to look at or you want to gauge willpower or the lack of it, it's not difficult. Let's use a very simple analogy. If someone stood up right now in this room and told you, have a bag of rice and vote me, you're looking at a thief. Do we agree? You're looking at me because that bag of rice is what is going to trade your, right? Good. So let's use the same analogy. Supposing someone stood in the hallowed chambers of our house or that Senate, or House of Reps, and was telling you to rehabilitate, reabsorb, reintegrate, and all those things, amnesty. For people who have rubbished the state, they don't have any regards for anyone, true and through. What do you think you're looking at? You're looking at the benefactor of these people. The next person to stand up in that Senate building and tell us that, look, you know, well, let's go and forgive these people. You are looking at the benefactors. You don't need any Qatar or United Arab Emirates to release their names now. Okay, Captain, two times. Yes, sir. It's good you refer to the uh, National uh, Security Strategy document, uh, which was celebrated. Indeed. Oh, in five years, this was the first time that that would be revealed. Exactly. And you are right, you co already quoted yourself. But does it not surprise you that the service chiefs are still talking about security architecture? <laughs> At least one newspaper yesterday said, oh, the service chiefs are saying they would take a second look at the security architecture. Do we have brick layers in the uh, Nigerian uh, uh, military? Because uh, they are always talking about architecture, architecture. And I, 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 I'm beginning to think that uh, maybe these are brick layers rather than soldiers. Uh, the yeah. second point is okay. about the connection between religion and security. Uh, people usually say, they, you know, received uh, uh, opinion or wisdom, if you like, prevalent opinion that during the month of Ramadan, that we are likely to have peace uh, because, you know, uh, this uh, terrorist also in part fighting, uh, you know, uh, a religious war with down to us. But for the first time, we have seen that uh, they don't even care about the holy month. Why is this the case? Is it because they have become so bold that they don't even respect religion uh, and their obligations anymore? Well, to start with the issue of uh, architecture and uh, our service chiefs, you see, our national security architecture itself is not just, is not cast in stone. Let me put it this way. 
The service chiefs may speak about national security architecture frequently, but there are two aspects of it which we must connect with. National security, the concept, okay? The concept itself has to do with all those studies, the compartments, the genres, national security, as in food security, economic security, military security, and what have you. That's cool. Then there is also national security, the mindset. National security, the state of mind. That is where the tar meets uh, the road, the rubber meets the road. What I mean by national security, the mindset is what is citizens' disposition to national security? How do you feel about, to your second question now, religion, religious security? How do you feel about food security? How do you feel about health security? Sincerely speaking, how do our soldiers too feel about military security? And that in itself begins to lend credence or non-credence to that statement, that document NSA released. Now coming to religion, these people are not Muslims and they have spared no one in saying so. They have told people time and again that we are not Muslims, okay? People are not Muslims. They are not, if you want to see Islam being practiced, take a look at other climes, and you are going to see Islam being practiced, and none of it identifies with what these people practice. They talk about the month of Ramadan. How could someone in this holy month of Ramadan release, a, what do we call it now, release a video clip, and he is smoking hemp? He is not definitely, you know, that he's not fasting. There is nothing like iftar, there is nothing like uh, <laughs> sahur in his diplomacy. These are people who rape people freely in the month of Ramadan, subhanAllah. How can you, they are not Muslims. They have never been and are not Muslims and they've made no one, they've left no one in doubt that they are not. So we begin to look at them and see them as what they are. They are vermins from the pits of hell. And whatever is between them, and Mr. President, it's only known to God. So what do you make of the suggestion or the solution proffered by Governor Nasser El Rufai of Kaduna State that their location, their whereabouts, well known, their phone communication intercepted, why can't they just go and be bombed out of existence? Yes, indeed. Uh, Governor Nasser El Rufai spoke from frustration. Himself and uh, <laughs> And his deputy, Simon, Samuel Arwa, is Simon now? Arwa. No, Sa Sam Sam Arwa is Sam the commissioner. Yes. He's a commissioner. Yes. He's a commissioner. Sorry, I said his deputy. He said himself and he's a commissioner. For Sam home Arwa. security. Yes, arrives. for home security. Arrives. I beg your pardon, not his deputy. I know his deputy is female. All apologies to ladies, please. <laughs> uh, himself and Sam Arwa have been doing a lot of work. Now, out of frustration, you see this situation as something you could actually munch, I mean, metaphorically speaking. And you are being told, no, don't go, don't do this, or you are being given limitations, or you are being met by docile forces, then definitely you are going to be frustrated. Definitely you are going to, look, I don't see these bandits as being insurmountable, but as I told you, what makes them insurmountable is known to God, our Commander-in-Chief, those are the two places I want to rest it. Governor, I still hear if I at some point even talked about bringing mercenaries in. If he gets the chance, should he? Because a lot of people have argued it's not constitutional. But extreme times we have in Nigeria today. Uh, if you ask me again, I'll tell you what these people do is not constitutional. Okay. And who said mercenaries must be foreigners? Mercenaries need not come from Blackwater or Executive Outcome or all those ones. Who told you mercenaries cannot be sourced in home here? If you're looking for a hundred mercenaries, I'll give you one million and without leaving the borders of Nigeria. So if we are talking about this thing, there are private military corporations. Probably that is what he's talking about. Private military corporations, when they come in here to fight and make their money, they still recruit locals like me and you to do the fighting. So it's just, uh, you know, the branding that is different. Who says private military corporations cannot be formed here? 
who says a lot of things cannot be outsourced. If you follow the, 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 the United States uh, Operation Desert Storm, Operation Desert Shield in Iraq, if you followed events as they informed those uh, operations, you saw where private military corporations, a lot of things were outsourced to them. So who says it cannot be done? Why do we have to may wait for the, 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 the foreigner to make that move before we now do a copy and paste kind of thing? Okay, they've moved, so let's move. We can do our thing here. And trust me, if you bring in, if you bring in local, uh, if you set up a private military corporation, I know where to go recruit men who will gladly come and fight. And we will do a trade-off. Yes, there are a lot of people waiting. Rather than give uh, uh, bandits and terrorists amnesty, I'll take you to the prisons where we have lifers who are ready, they kill for a living, that's why they're there. And they're ready to come and do just that and get amnesty. <laughs> you, these things are not rocket science, but you got to talk to the right heads and the right minds to find out what exactly it is we're talking about. Well, quickly, Carter, what is the way forward? The way if forward. If you could summarize that quickly, and secondly, twice uh, in the course of this conversation, you have said, uh, uh, you, you know, it, uh, whatever is between the uh, terrorists and the yes. president, uh, Ahmad Buhari. Yes. What are you trying to insinuate? What I'm trying to insinuate pointedly is nobody knows. There is a conspiracy of silence, if you like. There was a time I said here that my president seems aloof about these things. It's very odd. It's unfortunate. You can't see, I mean, remotely related as we are to victims. We tend to get the shivers when these things happen. It's not showing in the commander-in-chief. Okay, then you said I should just summarize in a few words. And, well, let me just put it this way. Nigeria, as we have it today, is at war. There's no couching it in finance. It's at war. And all of us should just accept that, that we are in a very difficult uh, place, and there's not going to be any easy way out of it. So let's brace up and do what we need to do, one and all, to get our nation, to, to, to salvage what's left of our nation from the hands of, you know, bandits and, 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 and terrorists, my parting words. Well, thank you very much, uh, Captain Aliu. You're most uh, welcome. For taking time out to discuss this subject with us today. Thank you very yes, much, indeed.